Good evening, this is Matt Bautista, and welcome to our Bible study here in Faith Baptist Church, South Metro. Now, before we go back to our series, a journey through his story, which we will go back to it, well, I would like to recognize our freedom through God's grace as in our theme in Faith Baptist Church, South Metro for 2023. If you uh, are aware of it, well, if you're a member uh, of Faith Baptist Church, then you, you should, <laughs> but uh, if you're um, our guest who um, attends our uh, Bible study online, then our theme is Grace to be Free in 2023. And I would like to acknowledge us in our um, lesson this evening. Well, since it's the last Wednesday night of the year, and that's what we would like to do. So we're going to have a short lesson on uh, God's grace and freedom, the, the freedom that he has given us and how it applies to us as believers and uh, perhaps uh, give us um, uh, a different perspective or allow us to reflect on how God's, um, or, or on how uh, our freedom through God's grace has or should have affected us um, this year. But before we proceed, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for giving us this time to study your word. We thank you, Father, for the opportunity to learn. I pray for wisdom, understanding, pray for your guidance and your leading. And all of this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So, well, to start off, we do know that the definition of freedom, well, while it has a uh, a standard definition and as believers in the Lord Jesus Christ we know what freedom means uh, our freedom in Christ and the freedom to choose our volition that the Lord has given us but in terms of human understanding well it may differ from person to person depending on one's culture experience circumstance or other factors uh, it just sometimes so uh, we cannot help or uh, as a human being sometimes our definitions of certain things, well, they are kind of subjective. That's why we need to be uh, objective through the power of the Holy Spirit so that we would have um, uh, the, the right um, approach to things and also the, the right understanding uh, about um, different situations in life. But when it comes to freedom, again, if we, we believe in the Lord, uh, Jesus Christ is our Savior and we have the Holy Spirit in us and we have learned from His Word then we will have a good understanding of what freedom truly is. But again, and sometimes even yeah, even if we had that, sometimes uh, uh, as human beings, we, we still struggle. So sometimes uh, our perspective about the freedoms that we have, well, sometimes they, um, uh, they might be out of place. That's why we have to constantly be in fellowship with God. Uh, however, one thing is for certain about each individual regardless of internal or external influence. Everyone has to be free from the power of sin. And again, it's true whether we're believers or unbelievers, and whether we accept it or not, right? Because even as believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, if we are not careful and if we are carnal, if we are out of fellowship with God, then sin has power over us. Well, the death uh, we, we the death no longer has power over us in terms of uh, eternal uh, damnation or condemnation but well we have eternal life in Christ in heaven but as the as far as the power to um, uh, affect our decisions and to live life in accordance uh, with God's plan or not well sin will do its best and struggle strive to have control over our lives so it's true whether we're believers or unbelievers that uh, our decision to let the Holy Spirit control us will determine uh, how we will let the freedoms that we have affect our lives. And such freedom, well, is found in Christ. In our text, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17, or verses 17 to 18, this is what it says. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Or emancipation from bondage through freedom and we all with unveiled face continually seeing as in a mirror the glory of the Lord are progressively being transformed into his image 
from one degree of glory to even more glory, which comes from the Lord who is the Spirit. It means that we have the freedom to grow in grace. We have the freedom to, to be conformed to the image of Christ. God has created us in His image and in His likeness, and He wants us to be like Christ, to be like His Son, His only begotten Son. He wants us to follow Christ, and we have that freedom. But at the same time, we also have the freedom not to follow Christ. So again, our decision and, and uh, how we understand, how we perceive and understand how our freedoms will affect our decision, whether we will um, uh, accomplish the purpose that God had given in, given to us, that the, the, the Lord uh, wants for our lives or not. So we all have freedoms. We all have the freedom to do one thing or another. But again, our choice determines the outcome of, well, the, 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 or the consequences that, that uh, will, will, will occur based on what we decide. Well, <clears throat> let's note a few things about uh, the freedoms that we have as mankind. And later on, we will see that how it should affect us, how it affected us, and how it should affect us. And we will later um, uh, conclude, well, on how um, uh, these freedoms should should direct our lives in the future. Well, first let's see the fact that man had always been given grace to be free. We always had had freedom, and God had given us grace to be free. In Genesis chapter two, verses fifteen to seventeen, when God created man, right, right after, so the Lord God took the man Adam He had made and settled him in the Garden of Eden to cultivate and keep it. And the Lord commanded the man, saying, You may freely and conditionally eat the fruit from every tree of the garden, but only from the tree of the knowledge or recognition of good and evil you shall not eat. Otherwise, on, that, on the day that you eat from it, you shall most certainly die because of your disobedience. So, God had always given mankind freedom. The moment of his creation, he was placed in the garden and he was given freedom. Well, but as we know, uh, the sad reality that Adam disobeyed, disobeyed God, resulting in sin. So we always had the freedom to choose. We were always free to choose. God had given us, and it's by His grace that He had given us volition or free will. And Adam and Eve were free to obey or disobey God in the garden. <laughs> Even Satan had the freedom to choose for or against God. But again, as we have uh, already studied, and as we know, Satan chose to rebel against God. And the woman and the man, and even Adam, well, they decided to serve God as well. So, sin was a result of misused freedom. They had freedom to choose. Satan had freedom to choose. He had freedom to, to let uh, his, his arrogance take control of him or not, right? But he chose to be arrogant. He chose to rebel against God. And Adam and Eve, they had the choice to obey God. Despite, despite the, the temptation of the serpent, they had the choice to, to continue to follow God or let the temptation, um, well, entice them. But then their decision resulted in the sin of mankind. Because they misused their freedoms. But grace is the Lord's response to man. Despite all his freedom and sovereignty, God has freedom to, to, to condemn man. Just his freedom to, 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 to punish man. And it was his, he is sovereign. He had all the authority to deal with man. But he decided to respond in grace. Despite all his freedom and salvation is the result of God's freedom to be gracious through Christ. Through Christ, God was, was, was able to be gracious to man without violating any of his divine essence. He's righteous and just. So how could he deal with sinful man? But he is also love. He wants to show mercy. And all of that was accomplished through Christ, through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. God is free to be gracious to us. Well, we also see that our freedom had always been in Christ. Our freedom, even in the beginning, yes, even, even the time when Christ hadn't um, uh, 
come to the earth and had gone to the cross, so our freedom had always been in Christ. When man sinned, this was what God said to the serpent, talking to the, uh, uh, well, to Adam, Eve, Adam and Eve and the serpent in the garden when, when uh, Adam and Eve fell uh, to sin. Well, and I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. He shall faithfully bruise your head and you shall only bruise his seal. This is talking about Jesus Christ, the seed of the woman, when he will conquer Satan or defeat sin, the, sin, the power of sin and the death, that overcomes Satan. That's what he was talking, talking about. So uh, we, we will have that freedom. So the freedom that he had given man, even to Adam and Eve, after that incident, right? After that incident, they were still given grace because in the future, Jesus Christ will be paying for their sins and also overcome Satan, defeating the power of sin and the death. And in Genesis chapter 22, verse 18, well, God's promise to Abraham, through your seed, through your seed, this seed, through him, a descendant of Abraham, a descendant of David, Jesus Christ, through your seed, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed because you have heard and obeyed my voice that time when he offered his son Isaac as the Lord had commanded. And that the blessing, well, also included freedom and spiritual freedom, physical, spiritual freedom, all kinds of freedom were found in Jesus Christ. We all have that in Christ. And when Jesus came, finally came uh, on the earth in John 8, 31 to 32, he said, so Jesus was saying to the Jews who had believed him, if you abide in my word, continually obeying my teachings and living in accordance with them, then you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth regarding salvation, and the truth will set you free from the penalty of sin. So the truth will give us freedom from sin, the truth about salvation in Christ. And he continued in verses 34 to 32, 36, as he was talking with the Jews. He said, Jesus answered when they said, that, well, uh, we are Abraham's descendants. Well, he said that, eh, yeah, you are, but uh, if you were, then you wouldn't be uh, uh, questioning me. Jesus answered, I assure you and most solemnly say to you, everyone who practices sin habitually is a slave of sin. So that's applicable even unto us today. If we practice sin habitually, then we are a slave to sin. Doesn't matter which sin we are doing, we are a slave to sin. Now the slave does not remain in the house forever, the son of the master does remain forever. So if the son makes you free, then you are unquestionably free. And if we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as our personal savior, then we are free indeed. <laughs> this is our choice to go back and be a slave to sin. But as far as Christ is concerned, as far as God is concerned, he had given Christ, he, he had sent his son to die on the cross so that we could have freedom from sin, from the power of sin. But it is our choice that keep us slaves to sin. So we have freedom in Christ and the Lord had given us grace through Christ. And we have been given freedom to choose to do right, to do wrong, to follow Christ or to reject him to do his will or not, and to live life more abundantly in Christ or, well, live life miserably. We all have the freedom to do all of those. Again, it's our choice. It's our free will. Again, the grace that God had given us, the freedom to choose. Then we always have, well, we always had the freedom to trust in God. So we had always been given grace to be free and it's a matter of choosing to utilize it properly that will well again result in good or bad consequences for us well as we have studied in our series in the book of genesis well noah abraham isaac jacob and joseph well as recorded in the book of genesis were all free to trust god and follow him or to go the other way well, Noah chose to trust God and build an ark, resulting in the preservation of mankind. He could have chosen the other way. Well, God could have still saved mankind through another means or through another person, but, well, Noah, he chose to trust God. And he was righteous as, as, the, as the scripture had said, that Noah was a righteous man. Abraham chose to trust God 
even offering his beloved son, Isaac. And he became the father of the Hebrews and was called a friend of God. And so it was such an honor to be called a friend of God. But that was a result also of his choice to walk with God and to follow him. And Isaac chose to trust God and let his father Abraham offer him as a sacrifice without struggling as we have seen, as, as, as we have read the scripture, as we have studied the passages, right? The, the scripture did not say that uh, Isaac struggled. No, he just let his father offer him. And at that time, Abraham was, was already an old man. And Isaac was, well, he was still young and strong, but he did not struggle. His father was able to bind him and also prepare him as an offering. But then we know, as far as the account went, well, God stopped Abraham from offering Isaac. Well, Isaac chose to trust God and let his father Abraham offer him as a sacrifice without struggling. And he became one of the great patriarchs of God's chosen people. How do we know? Well, when God's people pray, they say, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is one of those, the great patriarchs of the Hebrew people. And Jacob chose to trust God and he became Israel. And also, well, Joseph trusted God. And God used him to preserve the Israelites and later on get them out of Egypt and return them into the promised land. So, now it's up to us. How will you choose to trust God? And how will you let the freedom, the grace, that God had given us the freedom affect you in your life. Well, to close, God had given us grace to be free, but it is up to us how our freedom will affect our lives. And it's not just applicable in 2023. That freedom, that grace, and our freedom goes on for as long as we live. How we see and understand our freedom will determine whether we grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ or not. So, well, the summary of 2023 for each of us individually will depend on our orientation to God's grace and exercising the freedom that the Lord had bestowed upon us. So the choice, well, you have the freedom to choose and that choice is yours to make. But God, as far as He is concerned, He had given us that grace to be free. Our Father in heaven, thank you for giving us grace. Thank you for giving us freedom. And thank you, Father, for giving us your word to guide us and to teach us how to use the freedom that you have given us. Thank you, Lord, because you did not just give us freedom. You have also given us guidance and the, uh, the opportunity to apply wisdom. Thank you for giving us knowledge through the scriptures and we help us father to understand it that we might have the right perspective about your grace and the freedoms that you have given us thank you for your faithfulness in our lives and all of the supreme in jesus name amen thank you very much for your time and may you join us again next time as we learn from god's word